this is your resident Land Cruiser nut and today I have a special video for you. We're going to be doing upholstery work on my 1992 FJ80. Like many of you, I was driving around in seats that the foam was damaged or it was flat or it was a combination that your seats were torn and the foam was damaged. And so I really wanted to do something about that. So I went online, looked at a bunch of companies uh, from seat covers to actual upholstery uh, covers and realized, you know, you got the full spectrum from around $300 to $400 to $1,200. After doing a research on the lower end, I was thinking to myself, anyone that sells you leather for $300 a seat, you're probably not getting the best leather. So I wasn't, you know, a lot of the, the, the comments and the reviews I saw were people that post videos of what it looks like after they first install it. And I was thinking to myself, okay, where are the videos um, on these from a year from now, uh, two years from now, three years from now? So I, I moved away from those. So then I went to the high end and I saw seat covers for 1000 to 1200 And I was like, well, that's kind of expensive, especially if I'm trying to do all of my seats. Uh, right now, I'm just focused on the first two. There's got to be a better option. I looked up a bunch of companies that just did seat covers, didn't like those. The other factor I thought about was durability. What I do with my truck, the off-roading, I get in it sometimes dirty, I get in it sometimes greasy. I just want to wipe it off. I don't want a lot of maintenance, so that kind of took me away from going with leather. So I looked at a couple options. I even looked at Jonathan Ward's videos and heard, heard him mention marine grade vinyl and auto, uh, regular auto vinyl. And so I started looking more into that and I went to my local upholstery shop. So we took my seat out and we made an exact template of the material that was on my original seat and we created new upholstery for it. And with that, I had this idea, let's keep this template in case other people like what's been done in my truck and I can show them and we'll do a detailed install video. So that's what today is about. I am gonna be going over to the shop. We're gonna show a detailed video of the installation process of the seats that I have. Keep in mind when we get there, uh, these seats can be had in any color. I did the color that most I think 80s came with in 91 and 92, which is the bluish gray interior. I found a color that kind of really matched that well. But if you have the tan or brown interior, that can be arranged as well. So first, let me show you the inside of the truck as it sits right now, explain a couple things, and then we'll head on over to the shop and we'll start tearing down a seat from what it looked like when it came out of the truck. And we're gonna build it back with the new covers so that you know fully what to expect. Let me jump over to the inside of the truck real quick and let's take a look. All right, so here is my seat cover. So we have the darker gray here, that bluish gray that kind of lines up with what's on the door panel. Let me see if I can get it closer. It's just a shade lighter. Uh, keep in mind, I just used the material that he had on hand. There may be some shades that line up closer, but this is so close that I am actually very happy with it. I mean, if you look at the, the dash, it is very close. And then with the bluish color interior that I had, it, it had that tweed in the middle. So I did want to do a two-tone seat that kind of mimicked that. So I went with a lighter gray in the center. And I can tell you, just sitting in this, wow the difference uh the one thing i will say with my upholster guy he puts in a lot more foam built into the the cover than the standard industry requires so you're going to get a lot of cushion this thing is very comfortable let's talk about the removal procedure for you um you got on you got two in the front here they are 14 millimeters when you go to put them back in the torque spec is 29 uh, foot pounds. I think I just went ahead and went 30. That's the lowest my torque wrench goes to. So just remember 29 foot pounds. There's two here. I'll jump to the back. And you have two right underneath these covers right here. Let's stop right here. We'll head over to the shop and we'll show you the process of deconstructing one of these seats and putting the new cover back on. All right, hello everyone. This is Steve, your resident Land Cruiser nut, and I'm here with Octavius. We're here in his upholstery shop in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and we're gonna be tearing down my 1992 FJ80 driver's seat and doing a foam repair on it. Uh, but first we're gonna start off with a little bit of information from Octavius about his shop and how long he's been in business and how, uh, his specialties that, that he takes care of here. So Octavius, take us away. Okay, thank you, Steve. Now what we do here, we do everything uh, upholstery-wise to vehicles, cars, 
boats, trucks. You ride it, we can cover it, okay? We don't do furniture, though. That's the one thing we do not do. Now, we do things like, as you can see on the table, probably behind us, we do seatbelt repair. I do not refurbish them. I replace the seatbelt webbing with new seatbelt webbing. So it's like, you know, basically a new seatbelt versus having to go out and buy a whole new seatbelt assembly. So if your retractor is not working well, you're you not need, the person for that. No, you you're just the person for the actual belt itself. Exactly. You need a new okay. retractor. So, but I can't replace the belt itself. That way, if it's worn or torn, it can be replaced and it'll be brand new again. Okay. So, uh, so working on my seat yesterday, um, was, it, was that your first time working with on Land Cruisers um, or you worked on vehicles that were going to be similar? No, I've been working on vehicles. I've been doing upholstery for 25 years. Uh, worked on everything from Maseratis, Rovers, uh, Benzes, many high-end vehicles, Land Cruisers, mm -hmm. Forerunners, pretty much every Toyota made, all the way down to Lexus and everything else. All right, guys, so uh, what we're going to start off with, we're going to show you a lot of the tools that you're going to need. It's not really a, uh, a lot, a few hand tools, maybe one specialty tool that you can get, would you say, the... The, 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 the local Harbor Freight can give you one that you can use. You know, that should do the job. For you to reassemble or you can Those go and get into the, yeah, the hog green pliers hog green pliers yep so we're going to get the seat up on a platform show you the tools you're going to need and we'll start tearing this thing down well guys uh so here we are we got the seat up on the table a couple things you're going to need is ratchets and sockets to take off the bolts most of them are 14 millimeter you have a screwdriver because you have a, a small screw here uh and one down here you need to take this off we'll show you that uh, and on the same side, you got two more Phillips head screws that need to come off. You have some cutters because you got to cut off the hog rings that are on the seat currently. And you have the hog ring pliers that you're going to need to have to reinstall the seat cover when it goes back on. Uh, as you can see, we already had this headrest removed. And uh, we're going to start tearing off all the plastic now. And I'll get this all on video and then we'll do a step by step of the removal process. always good to have a magnetic tray to put the screws in so you don't lose anything these screws are extremely small and they do get lost that's probably why I was missing one on the other side and you occasionally find some gold well look at that oh yeah look that was from my time in uh, Europe that's beautiful. yeah find the right socket of course probably gonna be a 14 millimeter good old 14 millimeter here So this is the bolt that on each side that releases the bottom cover. Uh, this bolt, these two bolts, separate the top of the seat from the bottom of the seat, allowing you to get to the bottom cover with no problem. Some bolts are tougher than others, so I like to use tools. So there should be no reason anyone is messing with this spring mechanism other than maybe to clean it off. There's no disassembly. Right, no no doing anything but maybe knocking some dust off, maybe re-greasing. Oh, the vehicle, of course, is going to be hard to take off. A lot of things are going to be rusted up. So it's good to have some power tools or some strong muscles. And take out the other side here. Okay, you can lift the arm up. That allows you to get to the other bolt with no problem. see separates one part of the seat from another turn the seat over you can see the tracks so a millimeter Toyota's most famous bolts are 12 and 14 12 and 14 uh, you can almost take part the whole truck with it oh man it's gonna be four of those two in the front two in the back And if your tracks are um, dry, uh, this would be a good time to re-grease them. Yeah, uh, re-grease them. Is there a recommended grease that you use for these tracks? Me, I like to use, uh, you know, like some axle grease or, you know, bearing grease or generally they don't wear out like that unless you're doing a lot of in the water, things of that nature. Then you get, you get some good dikes. These are Knipex or whatever it is. They're real good, but you don't have to have some expensive ones. Just something that you can either grab hold of these and pull them off. 
This allows the cover to come off from the seat. And the cover that you know you're going to install, it's going to be very similar or close to the same. So they they would need to put them exactly back where they took these off, correct? Yeah. When you take them off, you'll see the seat has designated spots for each hard ring. Okay. So as you look there, there's a loop there, loop there, loop there, where those get connected at. Different seats go all the way up. Loop there, loop there, loop there. There's a bar here that it gets connected to. They only put three from the factory. You put as much as you want. doesn't matter. All right. Now, I already disassembled this piece here, but there was a plastic piece that's just tucked in between these two bars. Just pull it out, and the seat will come off like such. Now, as you can see, this seat has already been repaired before. It's got some more hard rings in here. Now, when it gets into here, you don't want to twist and pull them off. You want some good dikes so you can cut them off. That way you're not to damage the pipe, the metal wiring that's in the seat itself that holds these on. Alright, there's your seat cover with a nifty hole in it. Throw that off um, to the side. Now, let's talk about this prior craftsmanship. All right. What would you give it right now? You see it, are we talking about an A, a B, C? Right now, it's a definitely an F, but it was probably a, a B when it was first done, but they didn't repair the underside of it, so the metal rod just basically cut straight through with no problem. See, so there, that's pretty much what happens is the only support they had, they added some here to keep the springs from cutting through the foam, but they didn't put any here to keep the metal wire from cutting through the foam. So we'll repair this, refurbish this by doing some light sanding with a wire brush. Yeah, now everyone, your, yours might not be as like mine. My, the one that I had before was actually worse than this. You this, can't tack weld these. No, these these springs are tempered. They won't be able to be tacked. But I can buy these springs over to size and, okay. re and replace them. Okay. It's, it would be rare that maybe these are broken. Maybe just we're talking about these bars here. Yeah, yeah. The There's sometimes it breaks here pretty much, you know, on this bar because your leg sits on it, rests on it. You get in and out. You put a lot of pressure on it. And it's only a small tack there from the beginning. It, it Sometimes they pop. So this one is in pretty good shape. You know, a little light surface rust, surface rust, nothing too major. A light cleaning, like, you know, a little abrasion, then get the surface rust off, then spray it with some kind of treatment. Any kind of paint really would keep it from rusting again. But if you want, you can use any kind of Rust-Oleum paint. That'll give you a little extra protection if you think you're gonna be out in the water or ride with outdoors or things of that nature. All right, so uh, I guess we're gonna transition over now to the upper part, right? Yeah, we're going to take it up apart, up apart, apart so you can see what, what it entails. All right, now we're going to take apart the top cover. There's a plastic snap here I already removed to go ahead and put on to the, to the new cover, which is here. It, it simply unsnaps from one another. You unsnap it, and then this cover will come off from there. Okay, this is an, now this is an important point. If you're not sending him your seat covers, he's not going to have that black snap piece so, so your alternative is going to be to use your alternative would be i will add my own snap piece it won't look as like the original one but it will connect the seat relatively the same way you took it apart okay all right all right in the back here they use nifty rubber I need your dikes again. Line cutters. Dikes again. Do not cut the rubber. Cut the rubber. Won't be going back on right. Well, that looks easier said than done. Yes. All right, there we go. Close that down. That allows you to roll the seat up to get to the other parts.
Oh, got a broken spring. <laughs> Fix that. Driver's seat is gonna generally have more wear than the passenger seat because he drives the vehicle. It's always gonna be someone sitting in that chair. All right, once again, you got a couple more on the inside. And it releases the rubber there. There's one in the back also. So basically, on everywhere it crosses, they did th three. Yeah, because it's quick and simple. Yeah, just secure one left, middle, edge, right. One, right, just kind of level it out there. A lot of times, you just pull the material out around from around the headrest, but these are kind of tight, so you would want to flip it over. All right, kind of peel the rubber up here. And you can see the two two plastic pieces that hold the headrest piece in there. You smush those together, crimp these together, you know, and then it comes out. Yeah. Smush that together like that. Allows this headrest mount holder to come out. If you can't get your hand in there, a lot of times what I like to do, if you can't get your hand in, I'll get a socket, put it on a long extension, push it in there, it'll make that go together, and it pops right out. Okay. Now, as you can see, the rubber is in bad disarray here. It's got a cut there, basically from the rod, the, the frame cutting through the seat there, here. Same wear that you would get pretty much on every truck, every car. After 30 years? After so many years, because it's the driver's seat. And it's just foam, it's not, you know, it's gonna cut through. Same on the back here, where he's got two busted springs, you know, a third spring that's been repaired already. Once you get in this chair again, it's gonna ride like brand new, you know. It's got a, uh, a lot of times you don't have a welder, see that hole there, you probably just yeah, so you're not exactly welding the spring, but you could weld the mechanism that holds the spring exactly. back on. Exactly, this is the part that holds the spring back on. Okay. If, not, if you don't have a welder, you can just simply use some uh, some um, T-tap screws and screw it back on. Okay. Right into the frame, side of the frame, and it won't hurt anything. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the foam off, because I will be welding this back to fix this the, the proper way. Now, like I would say people don't let one of these broken springs intimidate you. Um, if, you, if you don't want to use a screw, I'm sure going to a local welder to tack weld that back into place isn't going to break the bank. Um, and don't let it deter you from tackling one of these projects yourself. No. It's not that hard from the looks of it. It's just time consuming for one that didn't know how See, these things were. We'll repair this and reassemble it, but we'll put this aside. We're going to clean these off. Get everything ready to be put back together. And I'll be right back. All right. Okay, everyone. So uh, while we're letting the frames dry, we put a coat of paint on them to get some rust proofing. We're going to talk about foam repair and what's going to be included if you're cover if you decide to go this route. Okay, what's going to be included is I'm going to give you uh, several pieces of foam that's going to be pretty much in the same shape as your seat. That way, all you have to do is you know, get some spray spray can adhesive. This is something that I ordered from one of my companies, but it's 3M contact glue. You know, Napa, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, any of those places, or even Harbor Freight has some 3M contact glue. Okay, you spray one side, spray what you're gonna glue on, spray what you're gluing. Always the foam side down, not the cloth side. The foam side, spray that. 
give it a few seconds, you know, wave it, let it dry, then you just basically stick them together. Okay. Now, you don't want to stick it over where you got to put your piece at. You want to leave some little room in there so you can get down in there for your pig greens. Paul greens, pig greens, whatever. Okay, so this is a half inch foam, everyone. Yes. This is not what the industry standard is. This is a little bit thicker foam. And even the original that came from Toyota was a quarter inch foam, which we'll show you an example of how thin that is. And especially after 30 years, if it starts to smash down. So there's the difference. It's, I don't know if you can see it lined up. So what's going to be provided is this same foam and this same pattern when you order your cover. And so that's going to give you a little bit more cushion. Yes. And if you got a bad repair, like this one where the wire cut in, I'll send you a couple of little pieces you can cut yourself and glue and spray and basically kind of repair the section. Basically, this keeps that wire from cutting back through okay. the seat. Oh, yeah, so that wire is going to run right there, and you're just the giving it like a cushion right there, for it to slide right, on. With the fabric up, it'll take a way longer time for it to cut back through, and it keeps it from cutting back through. Now, if you have sections like over here, like big blocks that are missing, now is it better just to cut those out? Yeah, if you got a big block that's missing, you're going to need new foam from somewhere. Or you're going to have to get some another piece of foam and replace it and put it in if you're going to repair it yourself. If not, I would advise you just basically just order your new foam if you can. Yes, okay. There are good foam repair videos on YouTube um, already. Uh, I'd say this is a high-density automotive foam. Where, where would person, if they don't need to buy a new one, where would you go to buy this? Now, you can go to, like, Joann's have high-density foam. I'm not sure what state you're in, but they got them pretty much a lot of the states. Yeah, I would just Google high-density automotive foam. Right. If you can't get it from somewhere in town, I'm pretty sure someone should be able to send you a small block of it or whatever to repair your section in your seat. We're going to move on to the uh, upper portion now. A little 3M glue in there. Let that dry for a while. Same for this piece here. This glue works really good. Let it dry before you kind of push it back together. Now, for back here where this is bad at, you can put some of anything pretty much as long as it's to keep the springs from cutting in to the seat. Piece of cardboard, anything just to keep it from cutting into, cut the, it into the rubber and it'll make it last a whole lot longer. That way, when the spring goes against it, it won't push this through. And give tear it a, a hole in your seat. Right. Won't push through and tear a hole in the seat. And then if you let me know ahead of time, I'll send you something to go over this part here. You know, to kind of bandage it up a little bit. You know, now that we have the seat and we have the template, we have most of the things we need to do the 91, 92, and 93 seats to an exact fit. Even if you have some type of foam damage, he can go ahead and send you those so foam pieces that'll help it. repair it. Now, like I said, if you have a mi major blocks of ch or big chunks that are missing, you might have to go an alternative route. Um, if you don't want to do it yourself, you all can always drop it off at your local upholstery shop. I'm and sure they can it. work with you. Uh, or you can just buy a new piece. They're a little expensive. I think most people sell them for like $299. I don't know if the uppers are available. I've only seen the bottoms, but um, that's the route you would have to go. All right, when you, sometimes these rods are bent or broken. If they're rusted bad, this one seems pretty, this one's pretty good. You'll need to use them over. But if you damage them getting them out, you let me know ahead of time, or you may need some, I can send those also. I feel like that's just a, over. I feel like that's just a coat hanger that's bent on the end. No, it's a lot stronger than a coat hanger. Okay. Coat hanger won't work. Okay, so you put a coat hanger in, and you're gonna be disappointed. All right, so just when you have your old seats, just remember save some of the components off of it. You might need it in the future. This is what I use and replace, which is a little bit thicker, but just as strong, if not stronger. Yep. So uh, 
if, again if you have your if these are broken you can always go to the one of the big box stores or just let octavius know when you place your order uh, and he might be able to make you one of these pieces and send it along with you we're going to start the reassembly process so when you get your seat uh, the thought process you may have already had it disassembled so this is where we want to pay attention and we're going to show you exactly every step to recover these seats if your foam is good um, and you have everything you need this should be pretty pretty easy okay once you uh, you're ready to put the other seats back together just put all the wire back in the this is why it was important to spaces. yeah this is why it was important to save your rods mm -hmm. from your seat so you're going to need them to put back in the new seat cover in the appropriate spots it's kind of self-explanatory Thing to be to do is uh, basically start with the middle. I'm gonna put this one there last. That way you can bend it, bend the seat a little easier. You need your hog rings and your hog grain plier. Simply put it in the middle of that there. Spring load it so it'll hold it for you. And then clamp it to the seat. So we're gonna grab that existing wire that they were they were on from the beginning. All right. So you're just clamping it around that wire you shoved in in the middle. Yep. Grabbing that wire to the existing wire. Okay. And just basically do the same all the way around. All right, let's get that done. Simply roll it from the front to the back. Makes it easier for the cover to go down and on. Flip it over. Basically do the same thing. Now, seat already has marks where you should go ahead and where you put this at, so, yeah. spoke about earlier that plastic piece it's, it's that's sold here it just basically gets rolled around and tucked in between the two lips so if you don't have this plastic piece this is where we would go with more where we would go with more pig rings onto it guys so let's just take a look here the number of hog greens we have in so we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve because i'm going to put one more right oh 
and then we're gonna put one more right here. So the holes are marked where to go at in the frame of the seat. There we go. All right, so there's a good shot of all the haw rings. So if you have to do this yourself, you can always just go back to this one, take a look at it, um, and get an idea of where we put ours. And then pretty and much we're gonna go. we're gonna make a little hole where the original bolts holes were. I should have normally I put a bolt in. You can put your bolt back in, and once you put this on, you'll know exactly where the hole is at. I know where the hole is at because I've done it so long. But yeah. for future references or people that's gonna that want me to, I'll make all the marking holes for you. That way you know where to where you you can put the bolt at. All right, everyone. So that finishes up uh, the bottom. We'll move on over to the top section now. We're back with our upper piece. You can see we're just sliding it back onto the frame now. So you kind of just want to tap on it, make sure it's all the way down where it needs to be at. And you can kind of see that these holes line up there. That's good. And then what you want to do is you want to kind of turn this inside out and push the top of the cover in. That way it slides on, ready for you to roll down to the bar that has to be attached first first bar that needs to be attached in the back of the seat. Kind of sit it on like a hat and worry about how it looks at first. Repeat the same process with the hog ring. Hmm. Simple three with the five. Yeah, you kind of make sure you kind of got it lined up a little bit there. These lines kind of they really don't go in there, but they kind of line up a little bit there. Center it. I'll make a center mark for those who are gonna be doing it. Generally, I do. Which is that center mark there. And we're gonna pick one. And then that next line would be this bar in the middle of here. could use the original padding which is a lot thinner for those who want it but thicker pad kind of makes up for the loss of size of your foam from over the years and then that spring that's in the middle pretty much is what you're attaching to yes yeah, so one thing to think about after 30 years the, I kind of get what you're saying yeah, this foam is going to condense yeah, no matter condensed. what. So it, It's in shaved out. You've seen little dust particles everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's your foam. <laughs> and you can proceed to do the same at the bottom. Tuck the little flaps in. Here's that plastic piece I was telling you about. I'll, if you, if I'm making you covers, it won't be this, it'll be two of these that buckle into each other versus this piece right here missing. Roll that over, and this hooks into it. It's gonna be kind of tight there, but it'll hook into it. Tight. Those doing it at home, you can you can still feel where that go, but 
I do this a lot, so I kind of know where the hole should go. But for those who are like, going to need me to make some covers, I guess I'll pre-make holes or I'll make little spots where you know where the headrest hole should be at. That way you don't just be poking into your seat and you make a hole in the wrong spot and then you basically ruined your seat cover. Yeah. That alleviates uh, the potential scariness of this project for some people. Right, right, right. Eliminate that part, that scary part, but I kind of know exactly where to poke the holes at. <laughs> and then it has notches on the side of this thing to let you know which way to put it in correctly. You can you can feel the notches on the side of this this piece in here to let you know. But generally, it's sideways. And the one with the push in goes out. You can see there's a piece in there that goes in and out mm -hmm. that grabs the top of the headrest. Make sure it's facing the right direction. If not, you're gonna have to take everything back apart to get it out. And the driver's side only has one notch indentation to kind of let you know that it goes on one side. If you feel it, it's kind of smooth. It's only got one notch. Yeah, so that's a that's a critical point that he no just way. said. If you put this in and this is facing the wrong way, you have to undo everything you just did to get this back off and orientate it direct direction. So Correct. pay attention when you take this off, the direction it goes on and comes off. Yeah. And then now uh, we're going to just basically go in reverse and we assemble this back to the bottom of the seat. Just starting by hand before you use any tools. You can't start them by hand. You got something wrong. It's not lined up properly. It for the bolting on the side. You put the tracks back on. You want to make sure these two wires are positioned right because they'll get twisted up real easy and be like that and then, then you possibly break one. So make sure they're good and looped in those little circles right. The knob goes to the front. Alright. Put these back on. Basically just how you took them off. One screw at a time. Don't tighten them. That way you can, uh, you can adjust it because you need uh, the the room to make sure that the bolt goes in right because you'll be fighting it. You'll you'll fight it because it, it has a little wiggle room, but that's enough to throw you off. So just kind of put them in at first, get them started. <laughs> Yeah, like you said, when you're ready to put the seats back in, just make sure both tracks are level. So I like to start with the back because it's, cause you can see how big it is. Push them all the way back, both to the back. Put them both down. Just same as we, you put the tracks on. Snug them. Don't tighten anything. That way this will adjust with no problem when you get ready to put the front in. All right, so the seats back together. Uh, we'll move on to showing you the... Uh, putting these side panels on that's just a couple screws all right once again when it comes down to this piece here i'll do the exact same with the other seat i won't have your plastic so it'll be my kind of attachment so it's going to be the same concept but it's going to just look different versus this one is flat mine will be a little bit round you push that between the two forks and then you roll this piece of plastic into the other piece of plastic I suggest you start with the middle. That way it can hold it for you to be able to slide the two on the end. Put that in there. Just 
starting in the middle makes it a lot easier. Starting in the middle is pretty much everything. And there you go. All right, there's our headrest, guys. I got the seats reinstalled. You can see them now with the headrests. I wanted to open the doors, let everyone see the color match. Um, they installed really easy. Just remember these are 14 millimeter bolts and go to 29 foot pounds. If you've got a torque wrench like mine that goes to lower 30, I'm sure it's not going to hurt to put in one extra foot pound. But I can tell you these turned out amazing. So, a couple tips. Um, I went ahead and re greased these bars from where the headrest slides up and down, put the same grease on the track. My favorite grease to use is from a company called Mercedes Source. I use this on windows, just about everything that needs to be greased. Um, they have a high temperature molly grease that goes on window motors, uh, and they sell this in a kit. So look up Mercedes Source and this, cre uh, this synthetic grease, it's amazing. So I got all the slides done, got all the, again, headrests done, and they, they move up and down freely. It's, it's like sitting in a brand new seat. A uh, couple things to be a note of is when you're cleaning these seats, it's just soap and water only, no, no chemicals. Uh, soap and water only will clean them. Let's go over a couple highlights. And what I learned today from making the video was when you're doing this, especially if you're doing it for the first time, take plenty of pictures of all the hog rings and, and you can use those pictures to go back to where you need to place them. Also things to keep in mind is what would be supplied with the seat is that half inch foam already cut out to the shape of the seat that you're gonna need. Um, that is a big deal. That foam, I cannot tell you what it feels like to sit in it. It makes the driving experience totally different in these old vehicles, especially if you've never done anything to your seat and you're sitting on that factory foam that has had that has undoubtedly shrunk over time and just doesn't provide much support. So there we go. Um, a couple other things that can be included, you know, the 91 and 92s didn't come with map pockets on the back. Those can be added if you want. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are going to want to know pricing in the video. I'm actually not going to mention it in the video because three years from now, someone's going to say, oh, you've told me this price. I'm actually going to put it in the comments uh, below in the video. And what, for example, if you want map pockets, what that costs. It is a great option. The This is something that's going to last 10 years plus. You don't have to maintain it like you do leather. It's it's not cheap vinyl. It's actually really good quality uh, marine grade vinyl and automotive vinyl. So those are the, my final thoughts on everything. Um, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, please check the comments. If enough people say they want these seats, what we're going to do is you can tell that this is already a close match to the door panel. We're going to find a material that's even closer to the door panel um, but we just it's not worth it unless enough people buy these um, so again if you like this video hit the like button and give me a subscribe it was great doing this video for everyone today and I hope to see you soon thank you